For this being an anamorphic open gate setup, this thing is extremely compact and it's going to do autofocus. <laughs> Alright guys, so we're on the DJI Pocket 3 with the anamorphic lens. Currently, I'm in Sheridan, Wyoming. I'm on a commercial job. I'm kind of choosy on what jobs I take now, but I get to hang out with a bunch of my indigenous buddies and family and all that. So, but I'm going to use the DJI Focus Pro Creator Combo Kit for this whole shoot. We're running the Blazar Remus lenses. Uh, I was going to bring some of the Atlas Mercury's, but we're doing really run and gun quick shoot days and it's cowboy stuff. So I need to be as compact and nimble as possible. So we're going to run the Blazar Remus on this shoot. Before we get into the rest of the video, I have a lot of buddies who are asking me, hey, how do I set this thing up? It's real simple. For some reason, I just I haven't really went in depth on how to set it up. So that's what we're going to start off with. As I'm out here on the Blackfeet Reservation, I literally have an hour to film this to go eat go get all my stuff and then run to the location for the reason i'm actually out here for an actual job all right let's start with the camera real quick this is the lumix s52x does open gate de-stretches in camera waveforms like it does everything that we kind of need as a filmmaker i'm running the mofage poco rear vnd you see over here we have a dial as i turn that dial the nd filter gets darker or lighter. I'm running the brand newer cage on the S52X only because it's a half cage. On the side here, I actually had to take an angle grinder to it and sand it down. The reason being, when you put on the Mofage Poco Rear VND, it doesn't clear stock with the cage. For lenses, I'm using the Blazar Remus Anamorphics. I do have the Atlas Mercury's on hand, but I decided to go with these just because they're lighter and they're easier to lug around and we're doing super hardcore run and gun stuff. Next thing here, you see, it's like a little NATO rail that goes into rod support. This comes in the DJI Focus Pro Creator Combo Kit. These new Focus Mars have a lot of torque behind, torque, torque? torque torque behind them so if your rigs not buckled down and tightened down it can twist everything up make sure your stuff's tightened from there we have one of the most important pieces this is the actual grip this is how you control and power everything the lidar and the focus motor now let's put our lidar on when you get the whole lidar set up they give you this little gooseneck thing and this originally goes on to the bottom of the lidar here at the bottom of that you have a little quarter 20 attachment and a cold shoe foot this works well for a lot of things but there's already been a lot of situations to where i need it to be able to start rigging different options out so my buddy luis designed a 3d print this little bottom piece here this basically just replaces where that gooseneck goes and then we put a metal cold shoe foot on there and then that's going to this Yulanzi little uh, lens strap thing you see on the bottom here it's like some sticky grip stuff it's not like tape but it's like rubbery texture this simply just goes around the lens some of you guys might be saying how come I'm just not using the cold shoe foot with the little gooseneck thing straight into the camera while I'm running a top handle and a monitor that's where running this setup gets a little bit complicated. I am working with Condor Blue to design some more utilitarian type options for us. So we don't have to do all this silly rigging stuff. This holds it on pretty well. I'm not gonna, you know, hold the camera from here, They'd probably rip it off, but from there, we have two options on the grip here. You see there's a LiDAR symbol, then a focus motor symbol. This is where your cables go and connects to power and again, control the whole system here. But you can see I'm simply just plugging into those ports and there you go. Now we have power and control over our setup here. It's literally that easy. All right, guys, that was a little bit long winded. We were getting a little bit boring there. The next thing we're going to go over is how it actually functions, how well the tracking works, and then I'll show you guys how to actually set it up. But before that, the sponsor of this video is me. This whole video, I've used everything from the Pocket 3 to the iPhone using the Blackmagic app, shooting Apple Log, the FX3, Panasonic S52X. All of those are using my same LUT. For the past several months, these are the only LUTs I've been using across all of my work, whether it's commercial work like the shoot I'm on right now. I 
uh, YouTube stuff, literally for everything. So I'll put a link down in the description if you want to check them out. They're basically film emulation LUTs across all the film emulators I've used and all the film emulation power grades and LUTs I've ever used. There's always tweaks I always had to make on them to get them to look the way I wanted. And I've been able to get all of them to kind of look the same. So I just went through and I created my own film emulation from the ground up and it's all the, like the looks that I love out of film emulations. That's what we're getting on these. Let's get back to the video. So you guys will see as I enter frame here, the LiDAR automatically started to pick up my face. Now you see on the back of the camera though, I am out of frame. This is what's kind of cool because the field of view and the LiDAR are so wide to where it can pick up my face and it will continue to track me and the actual camera will continue to track me even though my face is not in the frame of our actual camera. So if I go all the way back here, everything should be working. I get up real close. We can even go past the minimum focus of the anamorphic lens here and it's still going to try to focus on me. Uh, then once I get in the frame, you see, there we go. And then let me just crouch down here so you can see that it's tracking me. Now, usually what I do, if I am using the wide mode, I will click the trigger on the front of the grip and you see that will turn the box yellow. Now, again, if we are in the AF slash MF mode and we're running autofocus, if there's a second person in frame with the front dial, I would be able to just, you know, drag that dial and it will go to the next face. And that LiDAR is going to show you all the different faces that it can track, but it's going to turn green on the face that it's actually tracking and locked on. Now, wide mode is great. Say if I was trying to do like a talking head segment right now and I want to show an anamorphic or one of my cinema lenses, wide mode is the mode that I'm going to use for something like that. If I was doing a professional interview, I probably wouldn't leave it alone. I'd want to, you know, stay manned on the camera just in case, you know, something goes in front of it. Who knows, like a, a fly could pass the LiDAR and it can maybe throw it off. That's kind of the downsides. So we are in the AMF mode. So basically that means all the autofocus that it's doing live, it will move the dial. And at any point I can hold that dial down and it stops the focus. And I could take control of that focus or I could let it go and it'll go back to focusing on uh, whatever it's tracking. I want to rack to the back and then let it snap back to the face and track the face. That's why I love about AMF mode because you count on the LiDAR to either land focus or to track focus and just rely on it when it comes to its strong suits. But then when there's things that, you know, might trip up the LiDAR, maybe, you know, like for instance, for me, if a horse passes through the frame or something like that, it might jump to that. That's why I pretty much put my finger on the dial. I'll get an AMF mode. I can hold it down and basically lock in whatever it's tracking so it won't move off of that. So that's usually how I do is I have some slight friction on there. So where if I feel it's about to jump, it's not going to be able to jump because I'm going to have a quick reaction to hold it down to make sure it's not going to move. So even when I was doing that complicated shot where I'm tracking the horse coming into frame, then I'm panning over and he's coming through the crit and he's riding the horse up the hill. I was tracking the cowgirl because again, the liar is able to track the whole frame even though the anamorphic was more tighter. So I was able to track the cowgirl and that was enough to keep focus on the feet. And then once when I was gonna pan over to the cowboy coming through the crick, I took over the, the focus by just holding down the dial and racking that focus back. And then simultaneously, I was able to click the trigger again. So it's kind of a lot of things to do at once, but the AMF mode, again, you just, you can rely on it to either initialize the focus or to do the tracking. And then you take back over when it gets complicated or you just let it be. And again, if it's one subject and there's nothing gonna pass, it's gonna work just fine. All right, guys, we just finished first half of today's shoot. And uh, yeah, going in, I was a little bit nervous about using the LiDAR setup, professional shoot like this, because, you know, I can't mess up from the first like setup. Uh, I was blown away because it worked just as good as it has been working for, you know, just even just YouTube stuff. A few things I just want to go over is like battery life and how it worked and everything. So just to give you an idea of like how much footage I shot, and how long we shot for, I was up at four on location by five, probably from like 5.30 into 10.30 we're filming. So let's say half a day, like six hours of filming, maybe five to six hours. The cards I have in the S5-2X uh, fill up about a little bit over an hour worth of footage. And you see I have 12 minutes left on this card. You see the battery life in the S5-2X, which also this thing actually does great battery life. Um, but let's go to the battery life onto the grip. It's kind of similar to the rest of the battery life and card space. So if you're someone that, you know, needs two or three batteries to get through a day in the S5-2X, you're probably going to need two of these grips. If felt like using internal autofocus like on a Sony or I guess the S5-2X. Obviously there's quirks about it. When I'm tracking an object and there's any weeds or anything like that they're trying to shoot through, 
it will trip up the LiDAR. So when that happens, that's also when I utilize the AMF mode and I just take over control and just hold it down so it doesn't trip. I was kind of shocked how far out it would catch subjects and I was in flex spot mode and I would just try to click on them and it would work. But yeah, it's just, it was wild to be filming with anamorphics as if I was using eternal autofocus. It was really trippy on my brain and I've never experienced something like that. And again, I was very stressed going into the shoot because I'm like, I don't know if I should be trying to use this setup for a job like this. But again, literally from that first shot, I was like, this is going to be a breeze. I was more stressed about the battery life. Definitely, I think you're going to need two grips to get through a full day. Like today's probably going to be a solid like 12 to 14 hour shoot day. So I'll have an hour off and take a nap. Um, but yeah, I'm blown away by this. So when you first bring up the LiDAR, you'll have something similar to this. Um, if you swipe down, you get to all your settings. You can calibrate your focus motor and all of that. If you swipe up, you have your dial functions, your dial settings, your M button, your focus motor torque. Uh, the first thing I would change in your M button, I would change it from LiDAR AF MF to LiDAR AMF MF. What is the big difference? We'll get into this in a second, but when you're in wide mode, that's when we have the face recognition and tracking. When you're in this first mode here, when the autofocus is on and there's multiple faces or subjects being detected, you're gonna use the dial here to switch between the different subjects. Now, if you switch to the AMF mode, this will give you control to where whatever it's tracking, you can take over the focus and basically treat it like manual focus. And then once you let go of the dial, it'll snap back to whatever it is tracking. I just leave it to AMF, MF mode. Basically what that does is when you click this M button here, it will change it to that mode. Now let's swipe left. Now we're seeing exactly what the LiDAR is seeing here. So you can see when we're matching up our image. So this is why rigging up your LiDAR in the perfect way is so important because if your field of view on this is off, from the field of view on here, it's gonna mess up you trying to basically link these two together. Say we tweak the LiDAR this way. You can see on the LiDAR screen here, the curtain on the left is dead center, but on the back of the camera, you see the middle of the window is dead center. So if you're tracking a subject on here and they start to exit the frame, they're probably gonna be exiting the frame on here. So again, this is why it's important to make sure your LiDAR is straight and again you want to try to get as close as you can to the field of view of your lens here now let's get into our modes real quick so we're in manual focus mode so this in reality you don't even need the lidar if you're going to run this as manual focus now if i click the m button now we're in amf mode we click here this will put it into wide mode so when you're in wide mode it's automatically going to do face detection all right guys i got 15 minutes i gotta head out to our next location here so sorry i didn't go through how to calibrate the lenses and everything i highly suggest that you just go straight to dji's website and do their tutorials again the reason i want to do this video i don't know how i did this video while i'm on this job like i don't yeah that was crazy but uh it's weird as i this is a side tangent but um um, it's where when I go on jobs like this, like I get paid decent and everything. I'm not complaining or anything like that. I'm super grateful uh, for these opportunities and for them to continue to come. Uh, but while I'm on these shoots, like I wish I was kind of back at home making YouTube videos, which is wild, or like working on my own projects and stuff. This job was a little bit more unique because it's covering a documentary that I made uh, and it's with my old friends and homies, uh, you know, out in the indigenous community. So this was something special that I couldn't turn down. But anyways, I don't know how I made this video during all this chaotic shooting and snow in Montana and everything. But literally every time someone gets their DJI Focus Pro stuff in, DM me, email me, text me, and they're like, how do I set this up? And they haven't even opened up the box yet. So I made this so I could just send this link to you guys. And hopefully this explains everything. And this is like a quick little boot camp on how to use this thing. And uh, also a little, another little side tangent, as my YouTube channel grows, I start finding these like just really negative people kind of attack me saying I'm a shill or like I'm bought out and yada, yada, yada. Uh, it's really annoying. Uh, but I'm learning just to block them and ignore them and act like they don't exist. Because in reality, who knows what insecurities that they have that makes them feel the need to be rude to people. And also, I'm down to throw hands. If someone said that to me in person, I'm going to throw hands. So if you come in the comments being, you know, an asshole, I'm going to be an asshole back. I'm sorry, I'm human. Just because I put my face and my opinions out online does not mean you can talk to people however you want. But anyways, uh, this isn't sponsored by anybody. I want to do this because I genuinely love 
uh, this whole new Focus Pro system and it's making my life easier and it's opening up even more opportunities for me to film the way I've always wanted to film. Usually on shoots like this, I would just use autofocus because it's not worth me dealing with having to manual focus and losing shots and uh, limiting the uh, type of shots that I can get. So yeah, this just opens up a wormhole to a whole new dimension of solo filmmaking. And uh, obviously you guys saw the, uh, you know, the team type stuff that we did earlier that was sponsored. But yeah, that's it. I'll stop rambling on. Uh, yeah, cool. Peace. <laughs>